Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In a previous video, we demonstrated the limitations of the stock Intel cooler. That's the CPU cooler they ship with all the non-K CPUs this generation. In short, it's adequate if you're going to stick to light workloads, and you're going to apply Intel's default power limits and not raised power limits for enhanced performance. However, if you are going to run demanding workloads or lift power set limits on the CPU to get peak performance, you are going to want a better CPU cooler. But how much do you actually need to spend and what kind of cooler is going to be best for you? We've got a range of coolers on test here from a very affordable 92mm tower cooler all the way up to the Noctua NH-D15S with representative coolers in between and also we've got a 240mm AIO in here as well just so that you can see the standard of performance that sets. We're going to run a series of tests on these coolers to show the thermal and noise characteristics of them so that you can make the choice as to which CPU cooler is going to be best for your PC. As a baseline, we've tested the supplied stock cooler. This is a very basic extruded aluminium heatsink with a copper core and an 80mm downdraft fan. The next cooler is the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim. This is a tower cooler with three heat pipes and a 92mm fan. We also tested the ID Cooling SE224 XT. This cooler is a nicely made option that comes with a good set of accessories and it's representative of many models of tower cooler with four heat pipes and a 120mm fan. We then move up to the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. This is a single fan heatsink with a 135mm fan and six heat pipes. And finally we tested the Noctua NHD15S. If you're interested in noise and ultimate performance, this might have attracted your attention, but it is a $100 heatsink, so can it be justified on an i5 non-K CPU? And finally we've got an all-in-one liquid cooler, which is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240mm AIO. This is a benchmark setting uh, CPU cooler, it does perform very well even amongst 240mm AIOs and we thought we'd include it just as a reference point so that you can see how the other coolers live up to it. It's also actually cheaper than the Noctua. To test them we built the system you can see behind me which is an Intel i5-12600 non-K CPU paired with the Asus B660M TUF motherboard. It also uses 16GB of DDR4 3600MHz RAM and a Zotac RTX 3060 Ti GPU. We built the system in the Corsair 4000D non-airflow case. This is a solid front panel though it does have good air intakes to the sides and we used 320mm fans two set up as intake and one as exhaust. We allowed the motherboard to apply its default uh, fan profiles to each of these fans. Similarly, we allowed it to apply the default fan profile for the CPU cooler fan. Our intention here really was to build what we felt was a representative PC. It's in an ATX case, it uses mid-range components with a 200 watt GPU in there, and we wanted to set up a PC as many people would without really giving a consideration for fan curves, letting the motherboard sort itself out and see how it performs in those environments. Obviously you are free to alter your own fan curves, but we wanted to find out what kind of stock performance these coolers gave. And if there's any headroom, you can then obviously use that to either prioritize temperatures or noise depending on your personal preference. Our intention with building this PC was really to build something that we felt was representative of what a lot of people want to build at the moment and had representative parts in terms of their heat output. First up, let's look at the performance. In Cinebench R23, we ran two tests, one from cold and second after a 10 minute loop to check for thermal throttling. We can see that all of these coolers allow the CPU to perform optimally with the exception of the stock cooler. That cooler is unable to deliver results after 10 minutes owing to exceeding acceptable temperatures with multi-core enhancement applied. On a single run it is able to match the other coolers, but CPU temperatures reach the mid-90s during the short test. The rest of these coolers are within margin of error, and we do see the hot test cut performance slightly versus the cold test, but it's not a significant drop and it's to a similar degree across all the coolers under test. In the 3D Mark benchmark, the CPU test is part of a suite of tests to test gaming performance. It is an all-core test. It fits entirely within the short-term power limit of this CPU. You can see that all the coolers perform identically in this test, even the Intel stock cooler. So it seems that all of these coolers offer very similar performance with the exception of the stock cooler. So it really comes down to their thermal performance in terms of the temperatures they operate the CPU at and also their sound profiles. To test thermal performance, we ran Cinebench R23 on a 10 minute loop. We wanted to see if these coolers achieved steady state in terms of temperatures or if they allowed CPU temperatures to climb over time. We also wanted to see if any of them exhibited excessive fan noise. First, the stock cooler can be seen quickly maxing the CPU temperature out at 100 degrees C, and we stopped the test once it was apparent that it wasn't going to get any better. This cooler just isn't adequate for running an Intel i5 CPU with uncapped power limits. It's designed very much around Intel's stock 65 watt long term power limit. 
The Pure Rock Slim allowed the CPU to hit 93 degrees C, but it didn't throttle and it remained in steady state at the temperature. This is what we'd define as the borderline adequate cooler for an i5 with power limits unlocked. The next best in terms of temperatures with the Dark Rock 4, maintaining 73 to 74 degrees temperature over the long term. But don't go thinking it's a bad cooler, we'll explain this in the next set of results. The ID cooling SE224XT impressed us when we reviewed it, and it continues to here. It holds CPU temperatures under 70 degrees C in this demanding load, and it actually matches the Arctic Liquid Freezer AIO. If you look, you can see that the liquid cool attempts actually trend upwards a couple of degrees over the 10 minute run. This is a function of the coolant temperature rising over time. Nonetheless, it holds 70 degrees Celsius, giving perfectly adequate performance. Finally, we come to the Noctua NHD15S, which defends its reputation by maintaining the lowest temperatures in test, around 64 degrees C. If you're finding this review helpful, please do hit like and subscribe. It really helps our channel out and it means we can continue to bring you this kind of information. To gauge noise, we'll look at fan speeds. Apologies, but we don't have the kind of testing equipment or environment that's really required to make meaningful assessments of noise profiles. Fan speed, however, is a really good indicator of the overall kind of noise you'll experience from these coolers, and it also helps us explain a couple of the previous results. First, we can clearly see why the stock cooler has a reputation for loudness. It spins its small 80mm fan at over 3000 RPM, and that's certainly intrusive. Next, the Be Quiet Slim has a 92mm fan, and it uses heat pipes to aid heat transfer, so it maintains around 2100 RPM throughout the test. You'll have to exclude the blip towards the end, I'm not quite sure what happened during our testing there. This brings with it an acceptable but audible level of noise. The ID Cooling SE224XT runs its 120mm fan at around 1250 RPM, which isn't particularly loud or intrusive. The liquid cooler also runs its fans at these speeds, although we are just looking at the radiator fan speed here. And finally, the two coolers with the largest fans run them the slowest. Both the Noctua and Be Quiet never exceed 1000 RPM, and in fact run their fans at around 850 RPM throughout. This is the reason for the slightly higher temperatures we saw in the previous results. This is a design decision to keep fan speeds low and the cooler quiet, at the expense of ultimate thermal performance. Meanwhile, the Noctua leverages its dual fin stack and slightly larger fan to achieve even better results at the same speed. We also ran TimeSpy's 30 minute stress test to see if any of these coolers experienced problems with heat soak. This is applicable because there's also a GPU directly beneath the heatsink producing 200 watts and that's an additional heat load on the case that wasn't present in the first test. None of the coolers had any issues at all with this test. All of them kept CPU temperatures well within uh, acceptable limits, even with uh, performance enhancement applied. The steady state temperatures that they achieved ranged from 40 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius, and really that indicates that this test is more a test of case airflow. Is the case and the intake system you've uh, applied to it able to deliver adequate cooler air to the CPU cooler so that it can do its job? In this case, each of the coolers was able to perform adequately, even the Intel stock cooler. To conclude then, we can see that it really doesn't take a massive cooler to achieve adequate performance on the Intel i5 CPUs they're only dealing with a 100 watt total load. All of the coolers under test here were able to cope, and it really comes down to your preference for value and noise. A 92mm fan heatsink like the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim performed adequately. However, we do just think that it's worth spending a few dollars more to step up to the next tier of cooler, which gets you more headroom and more flexibility in how you choose to prioritize noise and thermal performance. Once again, we were really impressed with the ID Cooling SE224XT. Its simple design for heat pipes and 120mm fan performs really well in these tests. You'll have no issues at all running lifted power limits and demanding workloads long term on an i5 CPU if you choose this cooler. However, we know from testing that it performs identically to many other very similar designs on the market. You can widen your search to things like the Cooler Master Hyper 212, the Vtrue V5, or the Arctic 34 eSports. They're all going to perform very similarly, so buy on price and make sure that whatever you do buy does have that LGA1700 fitment for the 12th generation of CPUs. We really think this does represent the sweet spot of value. It gets you a cool running CPU and the thermal headroom to allow you to prioritize for yourself between fan noise and low temperature operation. More expensive air coolers are viable, but they do represent overkill really, unless your priority is absolutely the lowest noise output. It doesn't make a great deal of sense pairing these much more expensive air coolers with an i5 non-K CPU. Instead, you could put that money towards a more high performance CPU like the i7-12700 or an i5-12600K and still have enough money for an adequate CPU cooler. You'd get a better performing system overall for your spend there. 
And finally, you can see that the 240mm AIO performed well. It is really overkill for this system, but many people choose them for aesthetic reasons. They like the uh, way they look, and that's absolutely fine. They're perfectly viable options for cooling the i5 CPUs. However, again, they are kind of overkill and maybe overspend if you're looking for the absolute best value. In conclusion then, looking overall at these results, our recommendation really is that the sweet spot of value is a 120mm fanned 4 heat pipe tower cooler. They're available from $30 and up and represent a really good value way to get the optimum performance out of your CPU whilst keeping temperatures and noise to a minimum. They're a really valid uh, quality of life purchase when you are building your PC. They just allow performance over and above that stock CPU cooler whilst making sure you'll have no concerns about temperatures and long-term stability of your system. We really hope you found this video useful. Please do click like and subscribe and consider sharing it if you find other people asking the same questions. Please do also check out premiumbuilds.com. We've got loads of advice and recommendations on there to help you get the very best out of your next PC.